Hello folks. This is one of those quick update sort of vids where I relate interesting tidbits related to prior vids. It has to do with the latest craze in prophecy, the blood moon lunacy. To begin, let me relate a bit from my own prior vid on this subject. A final point to consider is that Hagee argues that these red moons and black suns are intended to be signs to Israel and to the world at large. But an examination of records supplied by NASA indicates that very few people actually witness any of these eclipses, and that the few who would do so are often not those for whom the message would be of any significance. The full solar eclipse of 1493, referred to by Hagee, was probably seen by no one at all. Having traversed over remote and freezing regions of the Antarctic south of Australia, thousands of miles from Spain. The full solar eclipse of 1950 was also likely seen by virtually no one, traversing another frozen path this time over the Arctic Ocean and Siberia, thousands of miles from Israel. The full solar eclipse to which Hagee refers in 1967 was also in view of only a frozen audience far into the Antarctic Sea, thousands of miles from Israel, and indeed, from anyone. It gets no better for the future black sun of March 2015. This solar eclipse's path takes it over a remote part of the North Atlantic and Arctic Oceans, with only the Faroe Islands and the island of Svalbard along the way. Fewer than 50,000 people inhabit these remote islands, which are difficult to reach and are frequently subject to cloud over, especially in March when the Arctic winter is still affecting the region. Surely if Hagee were right about these being a sign from God, and a message to the world, they would be visible to far more people. Similar problems affect the lunar eclipses cited by Hagee. Although these eclipses may be seen over a much broader area, they did not consistently match the areas Hagee points to as most affected by current historical events. Neither Spain nor Israel bore witness to all four total lunar eclipses in their times, and saw as few as one of them as a full-fledged blood moon. Why doesn't John Hagee explain to his readers where these solar and lunar eclipses can be seen? He spends pages upon pages talking about his theories of the end times, but not in one sentence does he explain the paths of these solar and lunar eclipses. It's not hard to see why he won't do that. It's because it's hard to explain why a total solar eclipse visible only in a small part of Siberia should have any meaning to people all over the world. Now I kind of wondered how Hagee would explain this problem, and my ministry partner Nick Peters alerted me to something where it's brought up to Hagee. And the answer is far worse than I expected. Have a look at this as Hagee is grilled by the astronomer Hugh Ross. Attention on America and not Israel. I mean, these blood moons are visible here, uh, but not in Israel. Is there a reason why the attention is focused? Very here? scientific question, if yeah. you notice, and it's a good one. Why isn't the blood moon showing in Israel? Yeah, I mean, we can see them here in America because you know a total solar, a total lunar eclipse basically is visible to about one-third to one-half the Earth. Is it because of our role as friend and defender of Israel? Is that why we have such a... I don't have an answer for yeah. why Israel can't see it. Yeah. yeah. Millions of Christians are following this guy. That's pretty scary. Now, of course, you also heard the ad hoc answer from someone else in that crowd, that America was seeing the lunar eclipse because of America's status as Israel's defender. Obviously, that doesn't help much because it just makes it all the less significant in statistical terms when someone appeals to a lunar eclipse as some sort of special sign. Bottom line is this. We need to dump teachers like Hagee and replace them with someone who can be a lot more responsible with the facts. If you know someone who's into this blood moon junk, make sure they know about this. You could save them, and people who listen to them, a lot of grief.